here's an interesting thought. Um, when we compare religions, and we say what makes up this religion, what makes up that, we are actually comparing only the differences. And that is you say, okay, so what is, um, you know, let's go keep doing these examples, Christianity. What is Christianity? The whole thing I told you with um, God and being the God of the Israelites, and then more, much more importantly, the whole deal with Jesus coming down, and God's love is for all, and love that neighbor. Um, but anyway, take away the love that neighbor statement. It's you. Because what people say is, they'll say, okay, so then God, Jesus comes down, dies for our sins, and goes to, you know, we can go to heaven and such. And they go, so what, what, what is uh, Islam, you know, the, for the Muslims? Um, okay, that's the whole deal. There was a long succession of prophets, and then there was uh, Muhammad, and he was, like, the seal of the prophets, whatever they call him. And then, um, and then we've got to obey, you know, what he we got here in the Quran and all this stuff. Now, what we're comparing here is really the differences. It's as if you took two people, let's say I'm sitting here, and there's this other guy sitting over there, and uh, you say, okay, you know, what am I? Like, oh, well, I'm the guy with brown hair, and he's the guy with black hair. Well, yeah, but if you really wanted to describe me, you'd say, I'm a human. Yeah, that, that, that describes me at a much more fundamental level than what color my hair happens to be. I mean, you say I have brown hair, I could well be a badger. I don't know, you know. <laughs> is, um, but I'm a human, and this other hypothetical guy is also a human. Okay, we're both humans. On that fundamental level, we're, we're very much the same. Oh, different hair color. Okay, whatever. Um, so I think that the philosophy, the, the ideas of how to live, these are the core of religion. You look at that, and everything's very much the same. You got a lot of similar ideas here about generosity and, and, and about doing the right thing even though it's hard and we, we know about uh, we know about kindness and compassion you know huh well, well practically all the major religions kind of believe in essentially the same stuff and you, and you always find a few passages like you know, people love to, to read on the the Muslims in the Quran, and there's a thing like if you steal an apple, you lose a hand, or something crazy like that. Um, and then that happens to show up in Disney's movie Aladdin, and that made a lot of Muslims really mad. <laughs> just, just so you know, people, I for one never caught on to that. I, I had no idea these people were Muslims even. And furthermore, when he's about to chop off Jasmine's hand, I thought he was just being a really mean guy. I didn't think that was like a social custom or something. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but I understand why you'd be upset about that. But yeah, so people can cook up with that one verse in there, you know. But do Muslim, not of Muslims, you know, don't give me Osama bin Laden. He's not really a Muslim any more than Hitler was really a Christian, you know, or, or the people out cru the Crusades and they went all killing. They killed innocent people, you know, that in the Crusades, innocent women and children. I've actually read that. Go look up Char Charles. Let's see. Culture of Chartres, something like that. Uh, put the exact. Ah, I'm not getting all the other questions of Crusades. My point is, um, you look at a religion that's loving and stuff, and you can always find this one aspect of it that seems to be not loving. For instance, chopping off someone's hand. But modern people, as I was saying when I got distracted by Solomon Laden, modern people don't believe in that. <laughs> they don't actually chop off each other's hand. They, 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 they know. This is the thing. I think everyone applies a certain amount of reasonableness to their, their religions, you know, and some more so than others, and some, you know... And so reasonableness doesn't mean doing what's different than in the text. That doing what's different... Because you can do something which is different and also much worse. <laughs> but there's oftentimes a better version, which is also happens to be different than the fundamentalist view. Um, so, so you put a reasonableness on this and you don't technically go in exactly as it says there. Also it says... In the uh, in the Old Testament, like you know, if someone commits adultery, you can you can stone them to death. You can like holy crap! If you're gonna kill someone, you can at least use like a guillotine and make it quick. Yeah, you know, stone them to death. What the freak is that? Now, of course, Christians will say, well, you know, that was the Old Testament. This is the New Testament. Okay, fine, but that doesn't seem to change the idea that at some point in the past it was okay to stone people to death. Why did that change? Oh, well, because Jesus came down. Well. Couldn't God have sent down Jesus earlier so we didn't have to stone so many people? <laughs> you know, could he... I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of weird when you look at this stuff, right? But the people don't don't stone people to death, either way. Right? You can even find things uh, in the Bible 
there's deals in, in the New Testament. There's deals against uh, against gay people. There's huge controversy right now. But there's there are people who are Christians, um, by and large, and nevertheless are perfectly okay with people having homosexual relationships, provided that they're good and loving relationships and all these things. Like heterosexual relationships ought to be. Other people who think that that gay marriage is destroying regular marriage. If anything's destroying regular marriage, it's divorce. <laughs> Why don't you look at, you know, heterosexual couples and how they don't seem to either pick the right person or to, you know, stay together with that person. I don't know. Very complicated. But I'm talking about reasonableness. I'm talking about, um, you know, no one's perfectly fundamentalist about this sort of stuff because maybe we realize in the back of our head that at least 1% of this is not right. I mean, Christianity's got a long tradition of that, right? We, we had our initial... Church and then became the Catholic Church, but that split up. We have Eastern Orthodox or Catholic, and then Protestants, and then there's like a hundred different versions of Protestant because they all had slight disagreements with each other, um, which is fine to have slight disagreements so long as you don't particularly think these things are very important. Like, should we baptize as a child or as an adult? Like, whatever. It's baptism. It's a ceremony. It's uh, you know, there's another thing. I have friends who believe that uh, that uh, the communion somehow is really necessary. That like, what God won't love you if you have some wine and bread. I'm pretty sure God is wiser than that. I'm pretty sure if, if it's, you know, it's a ceremony, you know, if you believe in God, if you have a spiritual communion with him, then you don't need the bread and the wine. You don't need the, you know... So we're talking about reasonableness. We're talking about... We're talking about how all the religions are actually very similar to each other. You know? I think, um... Muhammad Ali or somebody was it? He said something like, you know, lakes and oceans and rivers, uh, they all have water, and all the religions have have some truth. I think Gandhi also said they asked him like, you know, are are you uh, a Hindu? And he said yes, and I am also a Buddhist and a Muslim and a Christian and a Jew. And he identified with all of these things because he goes above the essentially petty nature of exactly how this came about some thousands of years ago. Uh, Buddha had this great saying about this, or parable, whatever it was. And again, you atheists, go look at these parables. They're, they're, they're interesting things, even if they are stories, right? Uh, Aesop's fables, we all know them to be fictional, but well, interesting stuff, you know, there's good there's good lessons in there. I, I'm okay with atheists. I'm angry. Uh, angry. Yeah, I don't want to be angry. I, I'm not okay with the um, with the, the raving atheists, the one that just says, oh, that's just totally false, and you're all morons, and the, the person who's, who's just mean about it. And of course, there are also mean theists, and, oh, you don't believe in God, blah, 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 blah. Yes, yes, I don't like them either. Um, the, the atheist crowd that just, I don't know, that apparently just goes around disproving religion, uh, but it doesn't get around to the philosophy. I mentioned earlier, religion is merely philosophy with a deity involved. Fine, we don't believe in this deity. What about philosophy? What, what do you believe in terms of how we ought to live? Huh? You know? Um, we, we, we have some thoughts about that. And so, the people who put themselves under the label secular humanist, that sounds better, because at least the word humanist does specifically say we believe in morals. Whereas, and this is our perspective, maybe I'm wrong, but it, from the perspective of people in religion, it sounds like atheists just spend all day, every day, blabbering about how much they hate religion. That's what it sounds like, from our perspective, so you know. 